you for coming back to my TED talk now, but uh, the second part of the imaging processing. So image filter, feature extraction and measuring objects. The like, I'll make a note here. I think the breakout session will either go by like really fast or really slow. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to keep an eye out on questions and stuff, but we'll, we'll get through it together, hopefully. So um, I found that the collab had a older version of the scikit image, which messed up a bunch of things. So like one, remind yourself for version and control. And I added this line here. It should work, but for a reason doesn't like to work. without the comment uh, to upgrade the image so that the, the code will work. And if you're running into an issue where you're like, I'm looking at the manual, it doesn't make any sense. Then it could just be a version issue. It's like, this is a pretty, two old versions, it's pretty little older. So the first thing is just like some imaging filter. You can do a lot and I find that you'll see stuff online for both using SCAMPI and Psychic N image uh, with all kinds of filters. So I've got these two URLs that we worked with the, the other day, last week, and we're just gonna look at them real quick. So we're going to blurry, blurry the face with a Gaussian filter and the Sigma here, just like any Sigma or, or even if you want to use a mu, is just like how much you want to blurry it. So there's a blurry face and then a very blurry, and then to extract, to like go back from going from a blurry to a smooth, just like a uniform filter. And then you have to you have to tune this, and this is already tuned, but when you do it, and again, you can see that it goes from blurry to super blurry, and then you can kind of extract some of the features back for uh, processing, image processing. And then you can also sharpen. So again, we're gonna start with that blurry, a blurry one, but this time we're gonna use the other, the other image. And then from here, they, they've done an alpha of 30 to create a sharpened image. So it's just you're, you're, you're taking away the blurry with this filter applying a filter and then sharpening it by getting rid of that filter. I hope that makes more sense than I said it, but either way, it's slightly buried and then this kind of sharpened filter. It doesn't look as well because of the, the differences between the dynamics, but if you want to just switch it with the first URL, you can see a very sharpened version versus this kind of blurry sharpened version. It does sharpen it a little. It's just like when you're looking at the first one, there's a, it's significantly more contours and stuff. So denoising is probably one of these some key things. So the first thing we're just going to do is introduce some noise and then using a Gaussian filter to, to denoise versus like a median filter. And then you can look at the differences. So here's the noise, Gaussian filter, it's like crap. A median filter is kind of doing the same thing where you're taking a little bit back, like the uniform filter. And you can do the same thing with like a binary image, which just has like differences in uh, zeros and ones where you can add some noise and then see what the filters, a couple of different types of filters will do. And there's a lot of filters. So you'll have to spend some time looking at them. For the psychic image, which is what I kind of prefer, uh, just because it's a little simpler, they have this filters doc where they've got every last filter here with some information and help for it. So things you might be familiar with and things that like maybe you've always wanted to try. And so you can do the exact same thing here, except we'll do, yeah. 
local thresholding and you know same kind of process we we blurred it but i'd like to say this is a, a bit better than the uniform filtering and a little less is it's a little easier to, to attenuate block size is the same uh so that that's like playing around with image filtering there's clearly a lot more you can do uh but uh to, to get to the the meat of it we'll go into this uh feature extraction, which is very, very necessary for like working with the, a lot of our data, you're gonna wanna get the, the, the stuff. So right now I'm just creating some synthetic data and uh, from the synthetic data, uh, we're going to apply the Sobel, which they have in both the ScanPy, which is this is what we're looking at now. And you can get this exact same filter from the psychic image. And we're going to do this kind of uh, so, so bell operation for the finding the high intensity variation. And then just some dot, dot product math. And so when we look at that, this is the random generated data. If you, you can look at the x direction here, here you're picking it up the high intensity differences. And then when you apply the filter, you're getting exactly that square. The, the pretty much looking at that intention. It's like literally looking at like a the changing in like a gradient here and applying the gradient. Obviously, like you could theoretically fill that in later and then just applying noise over it. Uh, so that's edge detection for anybody who needs it with this Sobel filter. Uh, and we're gonna do segmentation. So there's a lot of kinds of different segmentations. I'm just gonna go over histogram, watershed, and then random walk. And so first things first is we just make a simulated data. And so then you can see it, it's seeded. So everybody will get the same one if, as long as you don't change the seed. Uh, and then from there, we want to get a histogram of this data to get the differences between, say, the blue background and the green, because that's kind of what you want. You want to filter out, you want to get rid of this background data. So when you look at the histogram, you see you've got kind of two color points, this peak and this peak. And so this happens to be nicely done at 0.5. So you can use 0.5 to filter out this say low end here, we'll say the blue is probably at a, a lower and then the, the red. So anything bigger than this slide is probably the green, green dots. And so that's pretty much what they did here. You can, now you've got this kind of black and white and it's black and white because we've done the C map for it and interpreted, interpolated. So you can see now you've, use the histogram to get some filters. It's, it's not the best. You still get a lot of these random dots, uh, but you can denoise that. So we can remove it at, with the closing and opening operators and like binary opening. And obviously you can do all this stuff with psychic learn. And so we, we've clearly gotten rid of the, the dots in the black. And then now we just have these little black dots and the white objects, and that's where the closing can be used. And you do the same thing. You're just applying the opening. So it goes from your binary image, uh, apply binary opening, and then you get an open image and you use that image to apply it with the binary closing to close out these, uh, the white stuff. And then from there we have our mask. And so you can use contour to highlight your regions and it makes this for a nice visualization. So you can see what region, what each one is considered region. And obviously there's a lot of blobs here, but that would be for more touch the segmentation. And maybe this is what you're looking for anyway. You're not gonna get any nicer here without using something like watershed. Now that was opening and closing we can also use erosion and propagation. 
So we use that same binary image. So just so you remember what it looks like before all this stuff. And instead of doing closing, you just do the erosion. It's literally the same process, except you're using a different, uh, different type of function for it. And then propagation. So the propagation step is the one that takes uh, more, a little bit more effort. So you reconstruct it with a back propagation. So you have to have both the mask, so the binary image and the eroded image, and that's step one. And then you do this logical step here where they're applying this kind of temporary data onto it. And then you do a second binary erosion. So it's like back propagation. And then from here, you do a second propagation with the second logical step to get the final uh, reconstruction. So it's like a back propagation in machine learning where you do it once and then you apply logical not. So like trying to find true and false and then you do it again and that improves. And then I added a contour that improves the, the, uh, the, the getting rid of these these dots here because you you do do it once to get the erosion and then they just do it again to erode these tiny little dots is pretty much what they're looking for the things that are in the white now we can compare our closing versus the reconstructive versus the final reconstruction by looking at the mask which is the true what what we want to consider our true regions of interest and seeing like the difference and so I mean they're pretty small uh but like the reconstruction does do a bit better even if it's just the first version and not the second one but like that second one is pretty spot on so if you're thinking about doing this kind of filling these holes which a lot of depending on the technology you're using you'll get a lot of these like specs uh, i'm i mean i depending on the size of the image i would consider using like a, a the erosion propagation and you could do either one in the psychic learn or you can do it in the uh the psychic image or you can do it in scampi they're both quite fast and so then there's this os osu thresholding i actually don't know how to say that uh but i think this is also somewhat of a simple version and so uh instead of having to do all of that stuff here you just apply a thresholding mask and then, and then this is pretty much what, this is the image. And then if we wanna look at the bins, this is, not, this is probably why this is a very hard one to, uh, to threshold an image, but, so I wouldn't wanna have to use a histogram to figure this out, but with this thresholding, it does a pretty decent job with a little bit of like noise removal, I think you could do, you could get a, you could clean it up well enough where you're just looking at these kind of cell bodies and the attachment, the little, so like, this is, this is probably where I'd be like, uh, maybe if you see a histogram like that, maybe you want to use something else to do, do the initial histogram thresholding or do a different method altogether before you clean it up. So is there any questions before I move on to the watershed? I don't see any, but I, yeah, okay, good. So uh, the watershed, and I've, I have this link if you want to go through the, uh, the sky, psychic image version. We're using the same kind of dots, but uh, slightly different. So I'm gonna make, we're gonna load, make this little two dot image. And you can imagine like two nuclei stuck together, one's bigger and one's smaller that you needed to, to separate. And you get watershed from the morphology section. And then if you're doing local peaks, that's for like feature selection, feature extraction. So specifically, we wanna look at local peaks so the first thing they're just doing is they're calculating like the distance so they're doing a, a distance transformation on the image to get like where these kind of theoretical peaks are 
see here and here. And from here, you can then get the peaks from uh, the local peak. And then from that, from you get the peaks, that's pretty much the coordinates of here. And then from here, they use the coordinates to get a mask and labeled the mask, which is zero uh, and one, so that you can color them. So because they're labeled now, you can color them as separate and then they're considered separate sections. So you get separate areas and stuff. And so we can do the same thing with that reconstructed uh, blobs we had earlier, where we first calculate the distance between like these little, where they consider the like area differences. And so this is, a slightly more complicated because it's significantly more blobs, but you can see some like peak, peak stuff where you would expect them to be able to do some, some separation. And then we apply the same kind of peak detection. And then when we look at it, we can see, okay, this bumped up into four sections, two sections. Some of it looks good, like this one here, which was just two sections. So it looks kind of, oh, well, this didn't do perfectly well, but that, that's for using the watershed in this kind of uh, distance, particular distance thing for segmenting. It's always, a, it's this, it is a lot of art here when it comes to getting uh, segment, uh, se uh, regions of interest and in segmentation. So the, the random walk is also from a, is this one's from the segmentation. So the watershed, I think was from morphology while random walk is specifically from the segmentation pipeline, uh, segmentation package. And so I'm making pretty much the similar uh, blobs that we had before the simple ones. And from here, that two blob simple ones, here, the, the distance thing messed up, but I don't know why the distance thing messed up. It should be the exact same distance thing for whatever reason it messed up. Didn't mess up before. All right. Yeah, no. Okay, well, I don't know. If, if it's not messed up on yours, this really should have been exactly the same that we saw before. But the difference I'm really supposed to be looking at is the difference between the watershed segmentation and the random walk. You can see the slightly smoother line. And so like for like nuclei, I think I would prefer random walk for this specific thing, depending on which one you want, because it's slightly different uh, segmentation. It's a bit smoother. That the so that's the main ones for for doing uh, segmentation. If anybody's familiar with doing this stuff in NSJ, it's very similar. You're just doing the algorithms by hand. It's like uh, calculating your own distance matrix and then applying the function in in here. And then it's always good to visualize because you know. You don't know, you want to make sure that they're applying the correct mask. Uh, otherwise, you, I mean, like, what are you measuring? You want to be making sure you're measuring the right thing. That's always where human eyes are important. Uh, and so this, just check for questions real quick. Okay, it looks like we're good. This, this last bit is measuring. Uh, the objects of interest. And this is where you get your label. So I labeled the different random walk and watershed labels that were generated to these two things, different labels so that I wouldn't have to rerun them. Uh, and so with the psych, psychic image, they just have the measure function and then you can measure region properties. 
So if you just do the label that you're looking at the empty mass, you won't be able to do intensity values. And obviously these are the same intensity values, but for like a real image where you're gonna get differences and in, in level of, of intensity, you wanna include the image into the region proportion so that you can also get like mean intensity and stuff like that. And there are a lot of properties. I've just put some of the more basic ones here, like what is the actual label? So label one, label two, what's the area which they're getting from the mask? And then like the perimeter. And then this is just the, the list comprehension for loop. You can write the same thing as a regular for loop, just list comprehension makes more sense for this. Uh, centricity. Mean intensity, obviously, there's no difference in this. This is simulated data, but like this would be useful for like doing something with cells or nuclei or staining. And then we can do the exact same thing for the watershed, where you get slightly different things because they segmented out differently for each side. And so these are going to change a little bit based off of the, the mask. And so like you can theoretically test this out with a bunch of different masks, put it in a loop and print it out to see which one you think works best for your image. And then from there, you know, give it like a test a handful of random ones before you put that in the pipeline and then, then do a mass thing. And then because this gives you a, a, uh, a list, you can then transform that into like a data table with pandas and you can save that as a, a CSV or TSV file and work with that in the, something like Excel or whatever you're more comfortable with. Like if you want to port it over to R or something because you can look and image it better, the, the, the data you're getting, that's doable. Specifically say like, you know, if we wanted to save say mean intensity and all these things as variables instead of printing them out. So let me give you an example. Centricity and say let's supposed to do prop parameter and uh, area and then label because you want to know be able to trace back trace back the thing you put it in save it like this. And then you can make a data frame, which is same thing as R and call it lab label it. So mean intensity, and then same thing. If I could spell. You just remember when you're making these that the input is a dictionary. What do you not like? Spell something wrong. There we go. I don't know what it did, some error somewhere, but. Bam. Oh, that's right. Uh, because I uh, I ran this here and I ran it without the the image. It, it the properties it can't do mean intensity without knowing what the image is. So, and so like theoretically, you can run this. You have no the you can label the cells and stuff like that, and you have all this data. And then you can technically you can then pipe this into a machine learning kind of thing because you've extracted the features and you can uh, make uh, make any kind of model to try to predict. So maybe you wanna predict out like dividing cells versus undividing cells, or you wanna predict out the nuclei or neurons from some other cell type. You can do that here by saving the difference. See if you can make a model off of it, especially if there's enough, enough cells, if you've done this enough, 
so that that's that's the end of the the section here it's there's clearly more things you can do you can input video files and then look at each slice and then do batch runs and then combine them later i don't know if you can do a z stack for anybody who's doing confocal uh, but theoretically you could load it as load everything in and then take the mean of each image to do a, a z stack like if you were doing with image j uh, and i have no idea what, what you would do starting with the spatial stuff but i'm sure you could do it um the breakout section is is pretty much doing this similar stuff like this, except uh, with this different cell, different line. And if you have, don't want to run the whole thing, just uh, uncomment this line so that this will work. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to download this data. Uh, you can do everything but this downloading the data if you don't upgrade the psychic image, which I learned the hard way. Uh, so the idea here is that the, they have this data with nuclear staining and the bright stains here are the dividing cells. So the idea is to count the dividing cells uh, by getting the mitotic index, which is just divided by the total. So you I've laid it out in, in like five steps that I think should help you get to the end where you can visualize it uh, and then you do some type of thresholding to remove out the background so you can highlight the individual cells and then separate out the bright cells from everything else so that you can label the dividing cells, which would be on my time, going with those in my sources versus the non-dividing cells. And once you have them separated out, you should be able to count them pretty easily. Uh, and then if you can count them, then you can do simple math, which is divided. So if you can get to the, the separating three and then four and five is gonna be a, a breeze. Uh, so good luck. <laughs> no, but really, I just need to, Okay, thanks. Just 